In today's video, I'll be transforming my boring pub table into a glass top comic book table, creating my very own Pac-Man arcade game using cardboard, mostly. Then I'll be helping a friend out by installing what is known as a tree ring, or a tree circle. We're also gonna be trying to find out if bread is really the best way to pick up broken glass, or is this just another troll by Lifehack channels? And more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. In the last video, I asked you guys to tell me something that you would protect with your life. And after reading your comments, obviously you guys have your priorities in order. I mean, most of you just wanna protect your privates, which might be the best answer that anybody can give. And since you guys came up with so many comments, I thought I'd ask another question. What is something you've always wanted, but never got? It could be anything from a math teacher that isn't related to Satan, to maybe just a Pac-Man arcade game you can play at your house. Be creative with your answers and put whatever you can come up with in the comment section. I'll be picking 10 of my favorite to be featured in the next video. Now let's get this thing going with the first life hack, which is how to resurface just about any table and using any design you can have printed on paper. For this next life hack, I'm gonna be showing you how you can make your old table into a customizable glass top table or plexiglass top table for only a few bucks. First starts out by measuring your table. Mine just happens to be 23.7 by 23.7. So I went to Lowe's, went to the plexiglass the glass department, pressed a little button, and somebody came and cut this for me. And it is the exact size of this table. Now what I'm gonna do is build a border around this table using this wood material right here. I've got stuff stacked up underneath it and one piece of plexiglass that's the same width as that plexiglass that I'm gonna be using. So that way when I screw this into the side, that piece of plexiglass will just sit flush on top. And the purpose for that is that now you can put whatever you want underneath. Movie posters, drawings, art, even this thing right here if I wanted to but what I'm actually gonna be using is a Marvel comic book poster. This should be pretty easy. This table has seen better days, even though it's not that many days old. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna leave it bad reviews on eBay or anything, mostly because that's not where I bought it. I've done the knife challenge on this table. It looks okay from afar, but as soon as you get in close, you can see that, well, there's pieces of it missing here that I've just covered with Sharpie, and it's just overall destroyed. Little scratches here and there, and I think that putting a new cover on this and a new border around the outside is gonna make it look a lot better. Either that, or I'm definitely gonna be ruining my table. One of those two things is definitely going to happen. And as I stand here now, I do not know which, so, Place your bets. <laughs> Probably both, but I'll let you be the judge. Now I'm only gonna be putting in two screws on each side. So before I attach this border to the table, I thought I could take some measurements to make sure that the screws are completely symmetrical. I also thought about making a pilot hole so that way I can keep from splitting the wood. But then I thought, meh, screw it. Okay, that joke was terrible. Let's just get this thing built. Okay, all bad jokes aside, the wood actually did start splitting. So looks like I'll be making pilot holes after all. Let's see if that did the trick. Okay, after some fine tuning, I think we'll get this. So now because I'm gonna be putting in the pilot hole and then putting in the screw, I thought I would just use two drills, you know, to save time. Unfortunately, my other drill loves getting stuck at full throttle and just destroying everything. I would later set that drill on fire and then bury it in the backyard and make this drill watch. So, I don't think we'll be having any problems out of this drill, will we? At this point, I had everything dialed in, it was just a matter of putting it all together. I actually got really lucky because the wood that I was using just happened to be the perfect size. So that also would require no cutting. So it looks like it's finished and this fits perfectly. It's like this piece of glass was cut specifically for this table because it was. Now all I've got to do is peel off this plastic, put down the poster, do nothing with that stick, it has nothing to do with this, and then cut off the outside edges with an X-Acto knife. This is my favorite part. It already looks a lot better, but we're not done yet. Some of the Marvel superheroes might get cut out. Now with my X-Acto knife, I'm just gonna cut off the excess. 
Now that is genuinely awesome. I could not be more happy with this. That's a lot more fun to look at than what it was before. And it actually looks like it's professionally made. Now I am gonna paint the outside border black, but I just wanted to leave it like this just for the video's sake. But that is so cool. I'm blown away by how awesome this looks. And I am stoked to have this in my house now. I feel like my house is gonna look so much cooler with this in it. Or maybe it's just more little kidsy, but whatever, it's my style, I like it. With that being said, we're gonna probably see a lot of this in the future, so I won't harp on this table too much. We may even use it in the next life hack, which we'll be getting to right now. Now for this life hack, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a full-size arcade game at your house for very little money. Using cardboard, an old TV, and one of these retro game consoles. This one actually plays Frogger, but the one that we're gonna be using plays Pac-Man. And it also plays several other retro games, so it's better. And it happens to be in the shape of a Pac-Man logo. These things are cheap, you can buy them for like 20 bucks. If you like playing retro games, it's pretty cool. So if you pair that with an old TV and some cardboard, you could have a DIY arcade game. However, I want to warn you about resting a television on something you make out of cardboard. If the cardboard doesn't hold up, which it probably won't, you could be injured or even killed. But more importantly, you could break your TV. So after I had it structurally built the way I wanted it, I decided to add a little bit of a design to it. So I grabbed a can of spray paint and put a Pac-Man logo on the front and side using a stencil I made by tracing the controller. And here is the finished product. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty good. And everything works perfectly fine. It appears to be holding the television, although I'm not gonna blame anybody if it falls on me and I die. So I hope you don't either. Right? But yeah, you can play like 10 games on this thing. All right, I'm actually gonna play one round of Pac-Man. I'm pretty terrible, so it won't take long. Oh yeah, I'm gonna eat these stupid ghosts. Come here, ghost. Yeah, you are my lunch. That's right, I'm tough on these ghosts. They don't want no part of this. Ah! Oh, okay, well, maybe they do. So Pac-Man is cool, but one of my favorite games of all time is Galaga. It works! This is too cool. This is like the best thing in my whole house. It's gonna take some time before I actually get good at it, but Galaga's a great game for people that just like to button mash. Ah! Okay. All right, well, I'm just, I'm just gonna turn it off for now. I promise I'll get good eventually. And finally, I wanted to show you guys an easy way to improve the appearance of your lawn. Or in my case, one of my friend's lawns, because I lost a bet. Don't ask, just know that I'm a man of my word, and my friend is getting a tree circle. Lucky for me, it was pretty easy. You just multiply the diameter of the circle you wanna make by pi, and then make sure you've got that distance worth of whatever material you're gonna be using to make your circle. Then you fill it in with mulch. That's something you can just eyeball. And I must admit, it does look good. And while I was making it, I had a long time to think about my apparent gambling problem. However, I did feel fortunate to have had the foresight to have not wagered any actual money. And with that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. So I've heard a lot of talk on life hack channels about how picking up broken glass with a piece of bread is definitely the way to do it. They say it prevents you from getting your hands cut and also just does a really good job of picking up all the fine pieces. So we're gonna put that to the test. This is one that definitely makes sense, it should work, and I'm always looking for an excuse to break stuff so I figured I might as well give it a shot. Here I just have an ordinary wine or I think it's actually a water glass, I'm not sure, but either way, it's made of glass. Therefore, it should be perfect. And just a run-of-the-mill hammer and a piece of white bread. And of course, I put my safety glasses on because I don't want to get glass in my eyes. This is 100% safe, but don't do it at home. This is pretty strong glass. Okay. There we go. I'm being very careful so that I do not cut myself. Now glass is sufficiently all over the place. We're gonna try to pick it up. Okay, so here is where most of the broken glass landed and there's not too many small pieces, but there are definitely some. So I'm just gonna pick up the larger pieces with my hands, being very careful as to not cut myself. So there's lots of little shards of glass on the ground, which I am not happy about because these are my floors. This is where I have to walk. So I'm gonna try to pick up as much as I can with the piece of bread and hopefully this life hack is real because otherwise I'm gonna have a whole bunch of glass all over my house and I'm definitely getting bread everywhere So that's a thing. Hmm. Maybe more than one piece of bread. I mean it it was definitely working 
but it was also spreading it around all over the place. I don't know if you can see, but this is, it picked up a whole bunch of the glass, but it also left behind a whole lot of bread. But I'd rather have bread than glass, so let's keep going. I'm gonna pick up a few of the larger pieces that it was having trouble with the last time around. Hopefully it can do a little bit of a better job this time. Also, I found out what the heel is for, which is interesting because as we all know, the heel of the bread is completely inedible. So, now we know what it's for. It's for picking up glass. All right, it's actually, I mean, it does work, but it's not the end all be all. I'm definitely still gonna have to run the vacuum over this area when I'm done. However, I have not cut myself once, so there's that at least. And you know what? I actually think it worked. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a ton of like cut up bread left behind, but I'm not really seeing any more of the glass shards. So yeah, there you go. I mean, it does work, but this is definitely the way to get ants. So if you want ants, do this. <laughs> and yes, that is a butchered archer reference. I mean, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I can't really be the judge of it. There's obviously bread all over the place now, but I, I don't see any glass. Doesn't mean it's not there though. That's kind of the way the broken glass is. It's sneaky like that. It'll wait till you forget about it and then boom, cut your foot. So hopefully that didn't happen this time. But at the end of the day, it didn't really save me a step because I still have to use my vacuum. So get to it, Roomba. So if this video was helpful or if you just enjoyed it, make sure to click the like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and bell me for notifications if you'd actually like to see the videos. And of course, I'll be seeing you guys in just a few days with a new video. All right, thanks guys, bye.